professor, I would test you in the worst way. Don't bring a scantron, it's pop quizzes all day. Cause of our chemistry, we do biology. What's happening, fam? LAR movement still moving. Subscribe with that trend. You see the thumbnail, man. Look, look, look. So Jackson State won their opener against FAMU. It's like, like 52 to 3 or something like that. And um, they're ranked number 17. And I saw a clip with well, Undisputed, Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Or Shannon Sharp and Skip Bayless, however you want to call it. Um, and Shannon was saying, you know, there's only one prime. Like, if HBCUs are, are thinking that you know, this could be the start of something. You got to understand there's only one prime. Like only, you know, but Eddie George is the coach at um, Tennessee State. Right? So, but that's in the MEAC. It's not the SWAC. It's the MEAC. But with this happening, could this be the start of something? Because I talked about this a while back that in the early 90s, that's when the SWAC and HBCUs actually started going, quote-unquote, um, downhill as far as talent level because they still would get had relatively good players in the 90s, you know, and then the, the, that talent started going to uh, smaller colleges at times that became bigger names over, 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 the, over the years. But the fact that it's the first time I've seen a HBCU ranked, I think, since... Steve McNair was at Alcorn, and that was the 90s. Um, so it's always about recruiting. So if you get the big names, you, you, it, it throws your thing up. It's kind of like Boise State is what I think about. Boise State was a school in Idaho that it was like, you know, they had the Smurf field, and, but, and they were in a smaller conference but they just kept winning and kept winning and kept winning and kept winning till they had to say, hey, yo, you, you, we got to put these people. No, they, they, they're a ranked team. It's, it's no way you can win this much and not be ranked. You know, so is this a starting point? And I think so because what's going to happen is you're going to have talented kids who, I'm not going to Jackson State. I'm going to, I'm going to Alcorn or Alcorn, whatever you want to call it. Or I'm going to um, Mississippi Valley State. I'm going to Southern. I'm going to Grambling. Matter of fact, I'm going to FAMU. As a matter of fact, you know what? I'm going to Bethune-Cookman. I'm going to South Carolina State. Because if you're a football fan and you know the Indianapolis coach, Darius Leonard, a.k.a. Maniac, he's from, he went to South Carolina State. You know what I'm saying? So you got you got the other schools, you know. Um, what am I? Prayer View, a and you know, Texas Southern. So then you have these these school after school after school. And it's like, yo, I don't know, man. I, I I might go here. You know, and if 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 players who are older players come back, because a lot of professional a lot of prof professional athletes, especially football coaches, football players who became coaches, will tell you, you know, they have a hard time coaching. Because the coaches, they get they have a hard time getting hired, because the coaches don't want necessarily it's a predominantly white thing, and they don't necessarily like the black players becoming coaches because they're more relatable to the players and they can teach them the same information. So that's why if you notice and you watch in the NFL, you notice a a, a a black guy who's in the NFL and he's coaching, and a white guy is in the NFL and he's coaching, and they both were ex players. The white guy who was a player will probably become an offensive coordinator or head coach way faster, you know, than the black player. And the black player may never become an offensive coordinator or head coach. You know what I'm saying? Or it would be an issue if they become a good offensive coordinator or defensive coordinator so they won't be a head coach. But this avenue window gives them, like, let me use what I got to give it to my people or, or, or at these HBCUs, you know, and, and you got to give a shout out to Robert Smith because he's a businessman and people are like, what? Remember when Robert Smith went to the HBCU um, and he paid for the whole, the, 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 the I think it was that Morehouse? Um, he paid for that 
that year's student loan debt. He just paid it off. And for for the, the, the intelligentsia and the businessmen, it's like, yo, I'm going to help the students. These athletes are going to help the athletes. You know what I'm saying? The businessmen are going to help the young entrepreneurs. That like could just be the start of something. For me, I think I think so predominantly because of the ranking. You get what I'm saying? Because once something gets ranked, it gives other people an idea. Well, yeah, I could get yeah, I, I could get players, and if I get these good players, we could get them. Yeah, yeah, we can get them ranked. Yeah, because if we if we got the players, because they do all the star system. You got enough five star players. That's what people paying to see. That's that. That's the they pay to see talent. You get what I'm saying? This is why these schools become powerhouses over the years. Because Clemson wasn't a powerhouse. They, they was a school that fell off a decades ago who became a powerhouse again. Alabama was the same thing. You know, so these things, you know, te you remember Texas is, is like in the dumps now. You know, Texas A&M in the dumps in a sense. Because people don't look at it the same way they used to. So this happens. It's Notre Dame the same way. So with the HBCUs, it's the same thing. You know, once you get the talent... It's over with. So, is this a start? Is this could this be a starting point? Absolutely. It's more of a reset than a starting point in general. But I think the people involved could make it last longer than it did before. But tell me what you think. Like, share, subscribe, or die. Try and catch you on the next one. Peace.